So um, just let me know when we can start, uh, if everyone is here or we need to wait a few more minutes. I see some names are not there that were there yesterday, Maybe right? we can wait a few more minutes because we're still... A few more minutes? Okay, yeah. fine. So does your university have a break for Christmas or uh, go straight through? Uh, we have a few days break. A few days break. And your Christmas is 27 December, or sorry, 25 December, or is no, it in no. early January? No, no, it's in December. December, okay. Great. So basically you are on the same schedule as me. Yep. All right. So... Here in Egypt, Christmas is January 6th. Also um, here in Lebanon, we have two. Uh, one two, for the Armenian yeah. in January 6th, and the, the uh -huh. other in 24 and 25, yeah. Okay. And both so are, we are off, holidays? Yeah, we are off in both uh, occasions, okay. yeah. I see. Okay. All right, so I will be back to work on the 4th of January. Um, so I don't know if you want to schedule some days now for that week or if you want to wait and see how you do. What's, uh, uh, maybe we can wait until the users uh, has hands-on on the machine and mm -hmm. maybe then we will schedule with you something uh, in January okay. when we have more data and more questions to ask. Okay, great. That's fine. Sure. Great. Great. Uh, just let me know. Try to give me, of course, as much notice as possible. Um, sometimes things are busy and it may be some time if you want like a whole day, you know, um, but if you want just like an hour or two hours or something to look at data, um, and maybe you're a little bit flexible in the timing, like we could do it in the late afternoon or early morning or something, then the schedule will be more open. Okay, great. That great. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Um, and you still have your on-site days. I think you have five. I can't remember exactly how many, but I think it's at least five days to s someone to come to you. So maybe me or maybe another person. Um, so you still have those days when we can travel again. But considering okay, everything, great. yeah, but considering everything, I think this went pretty well. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, on-site is better, but... Slowly, slowly. I think we made some progress. And just to confirm, I got a list of, from Rami of all the names. You guys want to just look that over? Those are that's how, exactly how the name will be on the certificate. Yes. Correct. So make sure that your spelling is correct. Everything because. I will just copy paste to someone in Germany who will write the certificate.
Maybe, Alec, in the meantime, we can look at some uh, blanks and calibration if, to see if the calibration is going well along the way and the blanks are doing well. Um, yeah, okay. Um, all right, so let's see here. So this was the start at 4.30. Um, so let's see, this is the last blank. Take a look at this one. Doesn't look too bad. I click. Come on. Yeah. That 185 peak is really tall, but everything else is pretty much at 20,000, which is pretty good. Uh, this is at 50, so that's why, okay, normally we would scan not quite so low. Okay, okay, so yeah, normally I would scan from about 100. So what I recommend, oh, because you have that 99, right? Not that, that's probably why you did it, I guess, why you went a little bit lower, uh, because you have the compound that's 99 that you wanted to see, uh, one of the degradation products. So yeah, that makes sense from an analytical standpoint. Just I wouldn't normally uh, base the performance of the instrument off of that. So normally we'd scan something like 100 and up. So if you go from 100 and up, then you see we are okay. That's perfect. Yeah, that's actually really nice now. So I would say this is pretty good. Um, everything here is below 20,000. See that? So what I did, I just opened a blank, and I just double-clicked somewhere here at the beginning, basically before the gradient starts, and um, all, also away from the injection. Remember, we talked yesterday about the void volume, and the, the uh, flow-through. So that's probably it right here. It's sometimes not easy to tell in the mass spectrometer data, um, but when we looked, you know, in the UV data, we, we saw it. So that's it right there, I would guess. Um, so yeah, I just double clicked here, this area where the bar is, you can move it a little bit more if you want, it's tricky just to grab it, come on, oh, it's not going to cooperate over the internet, there we go, yeah, I'll put it there, yeah, so that's fine, 20,000 something at the beginning is good. Um, ah, we never did the ITC, did we? I said several times we'll do, and we never did. So you have this lens, it's called ITC, Ion Transmission Control. And if you remember this lens, um, this lens acts as like a gatekeeper. Um, and if the signal is too strong, it turns on, um, and then uh, uh, controls the amount of ions that go into the instruments and then whatever percentage it's turned on by, that factor is applied to the data uh, to scale it up. So this helps with our dynamic range. And maybe um, I have to remember, we don't have the utilities under show, I think. Um, all right, hang on a second. I have to turn that on for you the first time. Just give me a second. I'm just going to look in my software how I did it. One second, please. All right. Um, so I believe it's under Swix. And then, yeah, right there. Okay. So I have to make a new menu for you, program files, Swix, and then here, new folder, uh, yes, admin, I thought it was admin, okay, show, okay, and instrument utilities DLL, okay, so if we move this over, I believe it's here, Okay, 
this. So probably we have to restart. And then we will have under the show menu, we'll have down here at the bottom a utility where you can look at that ITC. So that is an interesting thing that we can do. I think we can close everything because nothing is running. Do we want to save the batch? Yes. Analytics. Um, okay, so what were these? Uh, let's uh, let's here make some save from yesterday. So we have this. So this was SMX with a real gradient check. All right. Um, all right. And then I think that's good. And then what are these? Um, uh, this was an IDA check, right? Save as, so this is SMX 60 PPB IDA daughter IN check. Okay. Um, what was this? Uh, we don't need that because we had bad results there. And this one was an unknown screen of what? This was an unknown screen of your, but also it wasn't great because the retention times are all wrong. Uh, so um, SMX degradation unknown, um, but wrong RTs I'll put. Okay. All right, so now we should be able to close this without having to save anything. You want to save no. Okay, so we just close and we may have to restart the service. I'm not sure. Let's see. So if we go to explore, now under show, yes, we have instrument utilities. Okay, so let's open the blank. Okay, the easiest way to do that is actually to go to the queue, right? So we look at the queue. This is the queue from last night. And we uh, were, Alec, we are not yes. able to see the screen. So. You can't see, oh no, what happened? Yeah. I wonder why it stops sharing like that. So here, and then we can say share. Oops. What am I doing wrong? Okay. All right. Uh, yes, there. Okay, now you can see? Yes, perfectly. Okay. Thank great. you. You're welcome. I don't know why that happens. Anyway, okay. Um, all right, so here's the blank we were looking at, the second blank that ran. So I will double click and I will open the blank here in explore mode. Okay, so we talked about double clicking here somewhere. This is what we were chatting about um, because somebody asked uh, who, who, you know, how can we check the blank, right? And so then we were talking about, okay, this 84 is pretty big. So um, then we realized, all right, it's kind of below what I would normally look at. So I would normally look at 100 and up. So 100 and up. And then I would say, okay, I want to be below 20,000, which is pretty much exactly where we are. So this is a good, a good background level. Um, 
And then I realized that we had never talked about how to look at the ITC and the data. Um, and so in order to do that, I had to turn on this feature for you where you can see it. So I was fooling around with that. And now we have under the show menu, we have instrument utilities. And then here you have some different things uh, that you can look at. Um, and um, the uh, ITC is count conversion. So the, what you're actually going to look at is the conversion factor. So the conversion factor is the factor that is applied to the data based on how much the ITC is turned on. So when you do that, select that one, say OK. Now you see we have a plot of the ITC uh, factor being turned on. Um, and this looks uh, this looks pretty good, so it's actually working and it's not maxed out. But I sometimes forget which way it is, so I will just show you in the training presentation. Um, I know what the problem is. I didn't share you the screen. I shared you the program. Did I click wrong? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. Then I'm going to share again, and I'm going to click on this one. Yeah. Now you can see the whole window, right? Okay, that's my mistake. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we go and we'll grab the training presentation. So where was that in the training folder? And right here. Okay. Let's just take a look at that again because also sometimes I get a bit confused which way it is. All right. So we have TOF theory detector, and then I think ITC was after that. Yeah. Okay. So just as a reminder, what is the ITC, ion transmission control? So that is a lens that sits here in the instrument. So what are we looking at here? This is the QJET, which is part of the interface, and this is the Q0. So at this point, we are in front of quadruple number one. This would be quadruple number one right here. And so we have a gate here that we can turn on depending on how many ions touch the detector. And this will control how many ions enter the instrument. So if there are too many ions for the detector to measure, so if we are at the saturation point, uh, then this will close slightly and it will uh, reduce the number of ions. Um, so basically, it is a, uh, a gate like this that can be closed or open, and we are looking to see how, how long it stays open versus closed. So it's not a, a door that can partially open. It's either open or closed, and it's applied for a certain amount of time. So the amount of time versus open versus closed is the percentage um, of what we, are, what we are looking at. Um, so if there is a massive ion current coming through the QJET, it will be turned, turned on to reduce that. Um, so here you see, okay, so let's look at this. The, the TIC increases linearly with the ITC. So this slide is showing that it's working. So here, the IQ0, which is another name for the same lens, the ITC, um, IQ0 stands for interquad, and zero means that it's at the beginning. There's a bunch of these all the way through the instrument. Um, so that's a little bit confusing. Let's just call it ITC. I think it's easier for you. Uh, so when there's no ITC pulsing, then it's 100% transmission, and you see we have uh, E4 counts. Um, if it's uh, turned on with a frequency of one millisecond, uh, so that would be a hundred uh, times per second. That would be equivalent of being only 10% open. Then you have 10% of the ions reaching the detector. So what does that mean? 90% closed, right? And then here, it's uh, 0.2 milliseconds, so it's operating at uh, 50 hertz, which is the same as being 1% open. 
So 99% closed, and we have 10 times less signal. Uh, so you can see as it's applied with the percentage, it is linear in reducing the ions. And actually, this is something that happens behind the scenes, which is kind of also why it's at the end of the training presentation. It's not so useful. Uh, I mean, it's not so, we don't need to know a lot about it in order to do the work. Uh, it's, it's happening behind the scenes without our input. Um, and in fact, we can't control it. But what is interesting is we can look at it uh, and see um, if it is uh, used or not. Um, so, um, they have changed theirs to 100%. Let me show you how to do that. Oh, I went to my own site, so that's, <laughs> okay, here we go. So, what we can do is we can, I think we can say percent, yeah. So, there is the, now we have the percent axis. Um, now, this is not going to be too indicative because we are scanning below 100. So this 85 might be throwing us off, giving us too much signal. So therefore, the IDC is turning on based on that and not based on all the other ions. So as you see in the presentation, where's the presentation? I guess it's, uh, yeah, right. So this is what it should look like over a typical chromatographic run. So um, what you are looking at is basically an inverse of your peak. So here it's turned off because there should be relatively small signal. And then when there is a peak, it turns on and it allows less ions. So your peaks are like upside down peaks here in the ITC. So this is what they are saying is a typical chromatographic run. And this would be an example here where um, there's too many things coming together. So it's kind of always turned on, even though you see the piece. Um, and they are saying that if it doesn't start at 100%, it may be due to contaminated solvent. Now, however, we are going below 100, and there are different rules for going below 100. So you can see in this example there, it's starting at 130 to 620. Um, so maybe we can establish a little bit of a rule of thumb, and that would be try to adjust the mass range that you scan to be um, just what you need. So don't go lower than you need and don't go higher than you need. Um, I understand that you went lower in this case, and that's logical, right, because you wanted to see a 99 ion. Um, but maybe you can go then to... Uh, you know, you can go start at 90, go from 90 to 400 instead of going down to 50. So the lower you go, the more background will be. Um, and if you look, then they did from 130, so that's starting here, right? So 130 and up, oh, I made a mistake, I didn't do zoom is on the, on the numbers, right? Click and drag on the numbers. There we go. So now we are well below the 20,000 limit. So personally, I think everything is okay. Um, we understand how to check the ITC now. Um, we understand what it means, and we understand the impact of the scan range. Um, so 86 would be some possible contaminant in your solvent, but not so much of a worry, I think. Like I said, I'm pretty happy. Everything is pretty clean. Um, and we don't see, we even before we were seeing that polymer stuff, right, around five, seven minutes, we don't see that anymore. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy. So what, what you could do is the next time you make a run um, that is not going so low, if you started at 100 or something, then um, what you can do is just come to the data and double click and have a look at a single scan. And then you can make the um, ITC visible by going to this instrument utilities and looking at the count conversion factor. That will open this pane. And then what you should see is that it will start at 100 maximum. Oh, it'll start at 100% maximum. 
And I believe that'll be the case, that it'll be okay. Um, so does that make sense to everyone? Yes, Alec, thank you. Great. Let me just see, I think that's it for the ITC, yeah. So in general, it's something that happens behind the scenes. We don't have control over it. However, we can look at it and perhaps use it to see how clean things are. Um, so I think it was Rami who asked the question about, let's check out the blank. So is that does that seem like a good overview for you of what we can get from the blank? Yes. Okay. All right, guys. So now let's go to the exciting part, which I'm sure everyone wants to see, which is can we see some degradation products uh, in uh, this data, right? So that would be right here. The A sample, I remember, is the degradation, right? And the B is the same, but the triazines added. And so we have the IDA here. So let's process that with the degradation method that we made yesterday. And of course, the retention times are all going to be different because today we changed the gradient versus yesterday. So we'll have to update those times, um, but we'll see if there's anything present. All right, so here we go. Um, we have analytics, right? And from analytics, we have results, new, and then it's going to be all the way at the bottom. So let's see, this is the data from last night. So where are we here? So we want to look at the IDA, and that would be this sample, right? So we can move that over to the right side. We want to put a standard as well. Why not? Okay. And then what we can do is we can say browse and we can look for the degradation products. Yeah, right here, right? Now, the retention times are not going to be correct. So I have two options what I can do. I can just hit process and then I can update from the result table itself. Remember we do that and then we do the right click and we say update method for components. So I have that option to do it. Or I can come to edit, and I can do it from the method here itself, right? So now I'm on this page, um, and I can select a new reference sample, which is our degradation products uh, sample that we ran with the new gradient. And then I can go to components, and it will, uh, it didn't ask me, okay? So it will say, okay, here is the old retention times. Or maybe we updated retention times, huh? I don't remember. Yeah, I uh, know, maybe this is just random, huh? Because we didn't see any peaks. So now we can go to integration. Yes, aha, uh -huh, we see, great. Oh, that's SMX, okay. So that's the retention time of SMX. And for that one, hmm. Ah, the last one, we get something. Maybe we are just not quite at the sensitivity level. We'll have to check if we lost some sensitivity there. I'm expecting a little bit bigger peak for SMX. We'll look in the standard too. Okay, so I'm gonna save this because I updated at least some of the retention times and process. Let's see how we do. Just let it do the integration. All right, so first thing is organize the table. And we can go to the targeted screen. Okay, and then I can see the data here. All right, from view, I 
can choose MS and MSMS. All right, so um, that's SMX. Let me see the in the 60 PPB. Is that really what we had yesterday? I thought we had more counts than that. Um, let me open and see. So yesterday, what did we save here? Um, I guess this one would be the best one, right? IDA daughter check would be processed under the same way. Um, get our settings correct and view the peak. Um, here we are, 35,000 counts, and today we, yeah, it's less. Here we have 24,000. So we did lose some sensitivity. I wonder maybe if the samples, some samples degraded themselves a little bit in the auto sampler. These concentrations are pretty low. Um, now, the other thing we had a peak for was the last one, right? There was a peak, but it, the mass error is too much out. So, I would say, I would say that could be present, but it's a, going to be a little bit tricky because it's such a small peak. The isotope confidence is pretty good. but the mass error is just borderline. That's probably, I would say it's there, it's probably there, but it's hard to make an accurate mass measurement on something that's only 700 counts tall. So, um, we need to inject a little bit more, huh? could go to a larger injection volume, um, or you could perhaps concentrate your samples. Uh, do you have a speed vac? I think I can concentrate my sample more because I'm assuming that I have come to the of a national sample. And my quantification from the uh, yesterday, it seems like it has 60 PPP. Yeah. I have four PPP of SMX that are degraded on three or four uh, degradation products. I think it will go lower than the reduction level. Yes, I I agree with you. So, um, if I make 500 PPP, right. and then I am that was exactly what I was going to say. You, you, yeah, perfect. Um, because here, this is 60 PPB, and you are well below. I mean, this is well within the range of the instrument. So you can go quite a bit higher than this. Easily, you can go 10 times. Um, the, the only danger is that, of course, then you are injecting more and more, I think that the degradant products you will see, because they will come on the sensitivity range, if the SMX goes too high, you may have carryover, but um, this is pretty polar, so I don't think it's very sticky, so I think you'll be okay, because 10 times more will be uh, 2E5, and we can easily go to the E6, so you, you could go between 10 and 100 times more. I would try 10 times more first, and see. Um, did the paper, did they give any percentage of what, did I see percentage here? No. They don't talk about uh, how much, huh? Yeah. Um, uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, can you see if in the under sample there are something, uh, I, I mean, we don't talk about this reference, but I put maybe I have enough degradation product to the yeah. Other, you know? yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll process now with unknown. Um, yeah, for sure we can do that. 
Um, where was the supplemental information? Didn't I have that open? Here, right? Yes. Yeah, no, here. I thought I remember seeing some table here that had percentages. Um, what's that? pH range. Um, no, I thought there was a table. Yes, here. I had the masses. Uh, not percentages. All right. All right. Well, um, and and all of these formulas are what you are looking for, right? These are the ones that you uh, that you that you put into the chart for the degradants, right? Uh, you also have yeah. Yeah. It's the same. Okay, so, um, okay, well, I mean, it's not too disappointing because you definitely approach it in the right way. It's much better to start with too low concentration and then go up rather than to start with um, high concentration and already contaminate things. So, in my opinion, this is slow, but this is definitely the right way to work, um, especially when you're getting used to the instrument. Um, we didn't know, so we started at 100 ppb, which is definitely in the range, and then we don't see what we want to see. Okay, we, re we make the decision to increase within the limits of the instrument. <clears throat> this is the, the thinking. I like this way of thinking. Um, all right, so we want to do the unknown. Well, you know what also we can do is let's add the time of flight data here because um, the TOF only, because that might be a little bit more sensitive. So I can say more, and I can say add samples, and I can just add the TOF only. So that is right here, right? This one. Let's see, we get a bit more sensitivity. We won't have MSMS, but at this point, we don't really care about MSMS. We want to try to identify this stuff, right? So here's, yeah, you see? Aha, uh -huh. it's there. Okay, so there's the SMX. So I select the top sample over here. And the last one, now we get a little bit stronger. We are within the mass error range. So we just needed, so this was 5,000. And here we were at just a little bit under, just a sm just that little bit extra sensitivity. This is the XIC, right? So in the IDA, you see it's a little bit scratchy. I call this a scratchy peak. Why is that? So because there is time missing from the TOF to do the MSMS, right? And and so there's less time. 10, 10, only 10% 10 of the time is dedicated to this 
generating this XIC in the, from the from the TOF MS. Whereas in the TOF MS only data, 100% of the time is dedicated for the TOF MS. So we have a much not only okay just a little bit higher peak, but it's a much thicker peak and it's much less scratchy. So when we get uh, we have the chance to get a better mass measurement from that, and you see the difference there. So I would say clearly this one is present. I don't know the significance of that, if that's significant for you or not. This is uh, this is 299. Oh, so this is actually a, an addition. Huh? What is this an addition of? This is a double oxygenation, huh? Oh, and a nitrogen. So this is the addition of uh, NO2? Yes. Okay. So I think we can clearly say that we've identified that. Now, um, when you inject a little bit more concentration, 10 times more, um, then you can run the IDA method and we'll get the MSMS and you can try your hand at the structural elucidation. Um, that's actually a great little project, right? You can take this formula, you can take the mall file, and then you can add the NO2 to it in the structure and see if you can get it to match the MSMS. Um, that might be something also you'd like a little bit of help with once you have the data. We can do that again, you know, in January if you want. Yeah. yeah? Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So I think it's encouraging, just we are a little bit below the mass is still wrong, 101. Oh, yes, okay, thank you. We didn't fix that, I guess, and save it. So that's the issue that comes up again and again, and you see I failed, I failed myself to remember. So somebody mentioned in the chat that this is still 101, which is wrong. So yes. what happened? I changed it in the method, right? But I didn't go to process method and then save it out. So I changed it only in the embedded method from that chart whenever we were working yesterday. So I think that's a little tricky. Uh, as you see, even I did it wrong. So we'll come to edit. And we'll come to components. And where are we here? Right here, right? So we agreed that this should be an H6, right? To give the 99. And I'll say process and close. Okay, and now so now it's 99. Let's check and see if we see a peak. Maybe we see a peak somewhere. No, there's no peak. There's a little something here. No. No good mass error. But that's pretty small. I think for these other peaks you will have to go with your 10 times more. See how you do. And then don't forget, you'll have to update the retention times, right? Because the retention times now are basically rubbish because we have not found anything. So only that last one was identified. Oh, and there's another peak here too. So there's two, two possible peaks. So definitely 10 times more will be interesting. Why there are two peaks. So you'll have to see if both of those are still give you a good mass of 10 times more, and you'll have to investigate the MSMS. Yes. Is it possible that this thing can add two NO, NO2s? Or you don't know? I don't know. It'd be the addition of one NO2 and the addition of two NO2s. 
All right, so now I will save the processing method this time. So we have the 99 problem is gone, 99 101 problem is gone. Okay. All right, so let's try the unknown. Now, what we can do with the unknown is we can use the uh, 60 PPB SMX as the control. And then we won't find anything that is introduced by uh, the chromatography. If we just do it as a single sample, I think we'll find a whole bunch of stuff. So let's do it as the, um, let's do it with the 60 PBB as the control. And what we have is this uh, 299 that we've identified. We'll see. So it has to find that 299044. So that'll be our check that it's actually working at 7.693 minutes, right? Okay. <clears throat> so um, let me save this. So this is SMX degradation. This is targeted, but correct else targeted, right? A new RTs. Okay. All right. So um, results new. And we'll move over um, so let's do it from the TOF MS. We won't have the MSMS, but right now we're just interested in finding the parents. Then we'll go and check the IDA if we need to. So the TOF MS will be more sensitive. So this is the sample. Uh, we can add the B as well, that has the triazines, and the 60 PVB we will use as the control, right? All right, so let's browse for the method. So we have non-targeted screen with the control, and let's just check the settings for that method. So non-targeted screening, uh, live research is turned on, uh, Cartier columns, we don't have flagging rules. I think we set this up for unknown. Yeah, just the library hit and the formula finder score. And the formula finder is so C H N O S. That's all your compound, right? Yes. All your compounds, no other missing elements, and 5 ppm. Okay, and then non targeted peaks, we move the slider bar here, and we said five times more. And can we cut the retention time like that? I think we can, right? Nothing really after 16 minutes, yeah. All right. So actually, we didn't change anything. You can say close. Do we want to save the changes? No. And then here, we'll select the control, which will be the 60 PPB. OK, let's let that process. All right, so here we go. So, all right, this is the A sample. So we have our table settings for unknown it is non-target screen. There we go. And we can look at the peaks, click on the peak review button. And what I will say is, because I see an MS, and I think I'll set it to one row. Oh, it already is one row. Okay, fine. All right, so we have here the, the blank on the top, and here's the sample. 
or let's say the control the 60 ppb and the sample below and then what I can do is I can say area ratio of control so that's going to sort my chart with the largest area ratio of control okay so that is basically not a real peak. Ah, oh, you can see that's definitely something changing there. Oh, that's interesting how it makes a jump and then it goes down. Again, uh, nothing. nothing. All right, let's try by area. I'm looking in the right sample, yes. All right, 299. Let me just see here how we did it with our settings. Maybe that slider bar is not in a great place um, because we should see a 299, right? That was your the one target that we did find. Check everything is working. Two ninety-nine. Yes. Point oh four though. And it should be at retention time seven minutes. So actually it didn't find that, which is disturbing. also not doing a great job of lining up, is it? Because clearly, that peak and that peak are the same, but it has not made that comparison very nicely. All right, let's try again with this a little bit over. And what I will do is I'll cut the retention time strongly. Um, so this was at seven minutes. I won't take anything after, let's say, 10 minutes. Let's try that. Just to avoid whatever that all that stuff is at 12 and 13 minutes. It's stuck. This happened before when we did process method edit and we changed the method right for unknown. 
I remember we moved that slider bar and we did reprocess and it also got stuck. But when we went and we did it from results new, it didn't get stuck. My memory is correct. It happened to us last week. All right, we'll wait another minute. But maybe this is a crash. What do you think? I think it's not doing anything. Yeah, stuck. All right, so let's try to close, but I think it will tell us cancel, right? Didn't we have this problem, or was that with another customer? Then it says cancel, and then there's no cancel button, right? Did this happen with you guys, or was this with another customer last week? I think it was here, right? No, it was us. Once yeah, it was us. All right, so... So moral of the story, don't change the slider bar from process method edit. Go to make a new results, suspend it. There we go. All right. Let's try again. So we have to make it find that 299, that's essential. There's no reason that it shouldn't do that. We have to get the right settings until it does that. Let's take a look at the sample in explore mode again first. Uh, I will open from the queue and we'll just see, um, I want to see how we can cut the retention time. So where is that 60 PPB is here. Okay, so um, the compound is eluding right around here, right? And I think these things are also present in the blank. Take a look. Yeah, you see that's a polymer, I'm pretty sure, right? 282, excuse me, 282 minus 250 is 32. Yeah, that's an that's two oxygens, right? Minus 32, and that's another one, 218. Oh, that's 215. Okay. So hmm. let's have a look here. Yeah, it is a nice pick shape. So officially the gradient ends here, right? 17 and a half minutes roughly by the time it gets to the instrument. Um, so I'm just looking to make our analysis easier because the compounds we are interested in are coming in this part of the gradient. We can cut this stuff out, which is just coming from the background from the sample. Our work might be a lot easier but on the other hand, it's unknown analysis and we don't know. So do I want to make that risk or not? I think we should try it and see because our, our job will be a, a little bit easier. Um, the retention time of the compound just was, was six minutes, right? If I remember correctly, the, the, un, the parent SMX, SMX. 
or five minutes. Let's take a look here. Five something, yeah, I think so too. Oh, coming, yeah. Five point five. Five point five. Oh, almost six five point nine five. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's cut it at ten minutes and see how we do. We'll just try. We got to try a bunch of different things here. A little bit of trial and error until we get some good settings that we like. All right. And this is also part of the process of what I was speaking about when you should have some control related to your samples that you can play with um, until we get it right. And the B. All right. So I will browse in the unknown. Okay. Browse in the unknown. Here we go. Control. Okay. So let's make some changes because clearly it's not working as we want. Okay, so we're going to come to non-targeted peaks. Let's move this here and we'll do 0.7 and we'll do uh, 10. Uh, we can make this more now because the stuff is not, the SMX is not eluding early anymore. Maybe we can reduce this three times. Uh, bigger in the sample than the control rather than five times. Okay, let's try this. So I'll do a save as, and this is with control, and I will say 3x. Okay, save. Okay, and then here we have the 60 PBB. All right. Process. All right, let's let that run. Hopefully it'll go. Finding the peaks. This is where it got stuck. Oh no, here it goes. Great. Okay. Okay, here we go. So the A sample is what we primarily want to look at, and I will put my table settings for the non-target screen. And then, okay, let's sort by mass first. We'll just see that 299 is there. Two ninety nine. Still nine forty. Two ninety eight. Ah, was it two ninety nine or two ninety eight? 99, right? Not present and not doing a great job of integration today. Says it's duplicated with it, but this is anyway the wrong retention time six seven point six nine three. Well, it means that there is too much variability. In the sample it's finding more variables than what we are what we are seeing, and I think the main reason is because. It's not integrating great. Ah, uh, maybe I forgot something. Under default settings, we have qualitative processing settings. No, these are just um, 
um, for the library search, quantitative processing, we set it up to be MQ4. Let me change this to be Try one more time. I'm confused as to why everybody see that. I'm a little bit confused as to why the software is not matching those peaks, or let's say not integrating them, not integrating this one when that one is integrated. To me, they are very similar peaks. They should be integrated. So, what I did was. Um, under projects, you have the default settings for how the integration is done. And the unknown processing will use this uh, to do the integration, rather than, if you remember, in the targeted settings, we have integration parameters per compound. And we set these up per compound. Uh, but now we need to set them up globally, and it still had the baseline subtraction window as being two minutes. So I changed that to be a little bit closer to the peak, and I applied also some smoothing. Maybe if we smooth the peaks, it'll be a little bit better. Uh, did we lose the screen sharing? Uh, okay, I'm uh, just putting on mute. Okay. Yeah, that is a lot easier if everyone else can still hear. Um, everyone can see, right? And here. Yes, yes, Alex. Yes, okay, okay, sorry. Okay. All right. So that that's what I'm doing here. Um, is I'm a I'm changing the, the default settings for the project so that we try to get a little bit more uniform integration. And I think that's something I should have done at the beginning. So let's close this because this is clearly not working nicely, and we'll try again. And I think I'll show you what I mean here. So we'll go to results new and we'll grab the same samples again. So um, that is this one and this one and this one, right? Okay. Now let's. Um, Browse the control method, non-target with 3x control that we just made. And I'll show you, right? So here, there's no integration settings here because we don't have any targets. But it still has to use integration settings, so it's using those settings from the default project. So I think this will be uh, better now, that we'll get some better integration settings. Everything else I will remain remain the same. And we'll keep the non-targeted peaks there. Okay, and we'll keep all of this and we'll say save. Okay, we'll select the control and we'll let it go. All right. Let's see how it does this time. All right, so now we're back here. Take a look at the A sample and bring in my table settings. 
All right, so let's look at the precursor mass quickly. Do a little. So still is not finding it. Huh? Let's see if the integration improved. You get exactly the same result. Aha, uh -huh, it didn't take my changes. I guess I have to make a brand new method. See that? Still it's using Let's try something. Here are the changes I made. Yeah. Well, in the unknown screening, it won't let you do it because it says there's already one. All right, sorry guys, my mistake. We have to make a new method in the beginning. How do you know? How do I know? Sorry, um, when things stop going perfectly, then I lose my train of thought. Okay, so how do I know? Because the settings here, the Gaussian smooth and the baseline subtraction window, these settings were the old ones before I changed it. And I came here to projects in the default settings, and I had updated this to be 1 smooth and 0 0.15. But I reprocessed with that method, and I saw it still had the old settings of 0 Gaussian smooth and two minutes baseline subtraction window. So it didn't take my change, and I think the reason for that is, is because I used an old method which was made before these default settings were implemented. So what I have to do is I actually have to make a brand new method after I change the default settings to get these settings into the method. Does that make sense? Yes, okay, great. So we'll go to new, select the same samples again, and where are they? All right, so it's this one, and it is these two, and now we'll say here new. <clears throat> All right, new. And we don't really need a reference sample because we don't have any integration. But I will go through and I'll just make the settings again. So we'll put it on candidate. We don't have any names. And we'll search all the libraries with 0 0.05 formats. Okay. Calculated columns we don't have. Lighting rules, I will turn on the qualitative rules. And we just have library and formula for this. We don't have anything else because it's not targeted. It's non-targeted. And then formula finder, we'll turn it on. And I think I made this a little bit bigger, right? 100. Oh, where did the C go? X. <laughs> what am I doing? C. C100, H200, N05, okay, and mass tolerance 5 ppm. All right. Non targeted peaks we had here one minute. Actually, I think I put 1.5 minutes, right? And then we put here 10. And I moved this to be here. And we said three times. Okay, so save as, and we're going to save this one, but we'll say new, new defaults. Okay, shall we try it? And maybe B is our control. All right, let's go. Fingers crossed. This is better for us.
Here we go. Got the data ready. So we'll check the A sample. That's the sample we want to see. I will make my table settings how I want them. Non target screen. Okay, and then let's go and see how we did. So, 99. So we got better peak shape, and we got settings are there. It still doesn't recognize those as the same peak. That's bizarre to me. What are we doing wrong? It has no peak here, so it can't won't even allow us to Well, guys, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what setting we are missing. Why? Is doing that in the B sample, it's the same. Even in the B sample, didn't find two ninety nine. No. All right. Well, let's do this. Maybe the control is what's throwing us off. Let's process it. And though I'm not sure that it will work, let's process it without the control. Um, so that would be just 299 should be present in the control. No, the 299 is the degradant. So we are cheating because we identified the degradant through the targeted analysis. And now we're trying to make the non-targeted find the same thing. And so the thinking is if the non-targeted will find the same thing, then it will also find the other things that are at the same level. That's the dilemma. So what we are, the problem we are facing is the non-targeted search is finding so many other things. It is not finding the 299, which we know is the difference. Um, I can show you that. Here's the targeted data, right? Here's the 299, right? Here's the 299, the targeted data. And if you look in the 60 PPB, ah, uh, it is there. That's why it's not finding it, because it is there. It's only showing us things that are three times bigger in the sample than the control. This is my point. Yes, very good. Very good. Smart. Um,
correct. So we are J6 something that we can't find because of that. I didn't think to look in the control because I assumed it was only a degradant. So that may not be that may not be a real degradant if it's also present in the control. It may be something that's in the background. It was maybe this other peak is the but if you think about it, when you add NO2 to a compound, adding NO2 in my opinion, would make it more polar. So it should elute earlier, not later. If that makes sense. This is eluting a minute and a half later, right? So, um, I'm not sure that this is, now I lost a little bit of confidence that this is really correct. It will be very nice to see this 10 times higher. It's similar to the SMX. If, if we have the MSMS of the SMX and we have the MSMS of this compound, the majority of the MSMS peaks should be similar because the only addition is the NO2, which is a small piece. So we should have also a very similar MSMS that will be a little bit more, that will have a little bit more confidence. Um, did you say that you had the samples uh, ready that are 10 times higher or not yet? I can't prepare a sample, which is sometimes only time. How long will that take you? Is that something you can do in minutes or hours or days? No. Uh, I can know in minutes. In minutes, okay. So let's do it right now, and then we'll run it. And yeah. then, um, unfortunately, today I need to leave at three because I have another meeting. But I think if we run it, we have time. We can see it ten times higher, and uh, we'll check it out. And then we'll get a little bit better results. Um, correct. Yeah. Correct. Uh, just this A sample. Yes. Okay, great. So if you wouldn't mind to do that, yes, um, what we will do is we'll just start the equilibration here and we'll start writing the batch. And then as soon as the sample is ready, we'll start running it. Okay, great. I will go to Okay, excellent. Thank you. Let us know when you come back. Okay. All right. So, um, go home. And we'll go to, okay, first we'll say equilibrates, we get the system going. So what are we going to do here? We can do, um, well, if it's going to be 10 times higher, we'll start right away with IDA, right? So we'll do this method. And here we will do, oh yeah, this was weird, right? Because I labeled them all wrong. That was not smart. 400, I think, this one. All right, that starts the pumps going, and we'll take the batch. Uh, what we'll do, we'll just open the batch from yesterday, I think, right? And we'll just modify it. Yeah, here we go, 16. Okay, so then we need to run a blank again, so we'll copy the blank. We should run technically two blanks, but now we are a little bit impatient, so just run one. Um, okay, and then we'll grab, so we're going to run the, the IDA, right? So we'll grab this one, and we'll put it right here. Okay, and so this will be SMX at 120 minutes, and I'll put here uh, 10x, yep. So we'll know it's 10x more. Okay, so... Um, Oh, weird, what happened to the batch? It's not labeling the MS method anymore. Yeah. Oh, do I 
need to scroll over. There we go. All right. A bit slow today. Okay, so this will be change this to the IDA, which is this one, right? OpenMS. So that's going for that's going that's doing IDA and it's going for twenty one and a half minutes. Okay, that's great. And then this is the fifteen minute gra gra gradient, but it means twenty one and a half minutes method. Just check that because try to keep it simple names, but in the end, I just confused everybody. Okay. So let's have a look here. All right, so it's 15 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes, but the stop time is 21, and we have our six-point gradient. Okay, this is perfect. So um, let's close that, and we have 10 microliter ejection. Okay, that's great. So all I need to do is I need to change the names, right? So this is going to be 40, and this is I-D-A-M-S-M-S -S -S blank. Okay, so we'll run that sample. Oh, and then this is going to be 41, right? 041. Okay, so we run just the SMX as well after. So we'll have that control. air as well, 60 PPB, so that's the same, that's good, that's good, I, the, okay, so when she brings the new sample, we'll change the position, and then here, we will say 42, right, 42, 90 AM SMS, okay, good, so when she comes back, we just have to change this. And because I'm not doing any kind of calibration, I will say calibrate every sample here just for now. So in case the first calibration fails, it continues. Okay. All right, so we can actually start the blank, right? Well, because hopefully she'll be back within 15 minutes, 21 minutes. So let's just check the pressure. How are we doing on the pressure? So, yeah, that's what I remember, right? It was about 220 yesterday. Is that correct? What, what did we write down yesterday as the pressure? I think it was around 220, right? Or 290. Huh. I can't remember. Did anybody write down the pressure? No, correct? 220? Okay. So we know the LC is doing okay. All right, so let's start the blank running and then we'll get even more. Uh, it start. I dropped to 190, huh? See, I remembered 190 some. I remembered 90 somehow. I dropped to 190 when we started, yeah. Okay, so it'll go down as the temperature goes up and that heat gets into the center of the column. Just wait a little bit then for that to come down and then she'll bring the sample and then maybe what we can do is we can take a coffee break for the two samples to the blank and the first sample to run and we'll come back and we'll look at that and we'll see if it looks good um,
I see the pressure's coming down there nicely. All right, that's in the ballpark. Let's start it. Start to get a little bit patient. Okay, so 46 is the blank. That's correct. So we can't start the sample yet because we don't know the position. But we can submit that one. One of 42. All right, there we go. So she's starting now. Should have here at the bottom. There's the sample, the blank at least anyway. Yeah, there's a blank with the cow. Okay, great. So that'll run, and then as soon as she comes back with the sample, we'll just ask her the position, and we'll set that to run. Um, and then we'll just take a little break while that runs, and then we'll come back and we'll process it. Hopefully we see something a little bit more interesting. Uh, so, um, you you had some extra software packages with the instrument, for example, Marker View on a separate CD, or no? Juan, did you check the CD or not uh, yet? I, I don't think so. We no. don't have uh, so just the uh, the Cam Spider connection. No. Oh, right. Okay. Did you activate that yet? No, uh, because uh, uh, probably we need to wait a little bit till we do some maintenance on the instrument. Probably next week we have to stop it for, uh, for a few days or maybe for a couple of weeks till we get the maintenance kit for the gas generator. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have some problems with your gas generator? Yeah, with Mary and Joseph. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. so then better better to wait because you have one year from when it starts. Yes, so, yeah. exactly. That is what yeah. And also, um, also, I mean, the Chem Spider is just a function to go to the website and to bring the mall file back. So I showed you how to do that manually anyway. So it's not like you are missing some functionality. Yeah, it's just like an ease of use thing to make that process easier. Is uh, there any? Oh, yes. Yeah, uh, about the, the, the market view, it should be on a separate CD, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I guess the, it's it's not there. Okay. Uh, I, as I told you that we have the CD for the site OS, the yeah. version 1.6 and I think 1.7. Okay. Uh, or maybe different version. Then we uh, downloaded the 2.0. So maybe those uh, there uh, you were talking about uh, the extras, uh, just the demo, like the demo files or something like that. Uh, they are present. They might be present on the sites or the sites or as uh, CD. Um, yeah. yeah so but not the market review, I guess. What I was suggesting was that Mark Review is a great software for finding differences. And it, it's not binary. Sipes OS is binary. It finds one versus one. So um, it needs license? 
Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah it's a purchase. Yeah. Um, so what Mark Review does is it does something called principal component analysis. And you can find uh, different uh, differences um, without having any any prior knowledge. Um, so I think uh, anyway, I can recheck the uh, software packages that we have and get back to you in the after the bit. Yeah. Um, so all of that software. So someone asked me, is there software available to download? Uh, so yes, everything is available to download from our website, and you can register for a trial license. And a trial license is something like uh, 30 days. So um, if you did want to try that out and you don't have it, we could do it. We could try it in uh, we could try it in uh, um, the new year. Okay, I'll show you the website. And actually, there was some uh, very nice. Um, Okay, so sciex.com, uh, and also I saw some nice blog posts, marker view. Sorry. It was under, yeah, here we go. So, um, all of our software is available under uh, you can come to the main website and then go to support and go to software support and then software downloads. And you can download and then here you have two options. Uh, so to download and to install is free, uh, but can't really do anything with that. Then you have here you can start a trial so you can get a trial license. Um, or you can activate your full license which you purchased. So you have those two options there. Um, and then there are some very nice um, um, in the in the in the FAQ about marker view. Um, so how do I learn and use marker view? So this is interesting. Um, ah no. This is not interesting. This is not what I was talking about. Um, uh, maybe PCA tutorial, though. Oh my, this is old. <laughs> yeah, I recognize the old logo. Look, 2005. That's some ancient history, but the software didn't change. So maybe that's interesting for you. But there was some, um, one lady wrote a very nice uh, three part um, series on what, what you can do with Mark Review. Um, All right, one second. I send the link. <laughs> You sent a link, or you found something interesting? Uh, the, uh, it's, a, it's a video of six minutes about uh, master review and master review software. Okay, master view is something different. Um, master view is uh, master view is an old version of Cyx OS. So um, there's master view and mark review, and master view is the old version. Here I found them, but now I have. That's okay. No. But now I have to get them from my computer to your computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to forward this to, um, well, it's under the community. Why it doesn't come up? This is what I really don't like about our website is that the search function is really bad. Community mark review.
Um, no. It's called what is principal component analysis. Um, here we go. Found it now. Um, uh, which one? Um, let's see. Education newsletter. Uh, this is Master View, though. Again. Oh, the second link. I see. I'm sorry. Second. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, this is what is this? It's coming. It's Oh yeah, this is the new features. So this is what's different in 1.3, but this is what I show you on the screen now is uh, the basics, starting from the very beginning. Um, so you have this blog post, yeah, by this lady. I don't know why it didn't come up in the search, maybe because nobody liked it, but this is really a, a good overview. This one, to read, it's just a blog post. Um, and then um, there is another, so this is under data processing, okay, oh man, let's go away, <laughs> no, there we go, okay. oh, same problem, our website is horrible. Hello. I'm Hello. You're back? Okay, great. Uh, I'm excited to start or I wait the um, for Yeah, no, you can do it now. We started the blank actually already, so the blank is running right now. So go ahead and put it in and then tell us which position you put it into. Sixty-six. Did I hear? Sixty. Sixty. Six, 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 six zero. Yes. All right. So we'll submit that, and we'll submit also the sixty PPB, which is in fifty-four. So we have the TOF IDA method. Okay. So let's submit those, and those will run after. Uh, let's just check the calibration worked. Everything is fine. Yeah, everything is fine. Okay, so that one's going to be done about 11.50, so in about half an hour that one will finish. Okay, so let me try to navigate more our website. Okay, so here I want to click on this. No, why, why does it do that? Oh, and it takes forever to go away. All right. Uh, now the whole page moved. Is this the tutorial? Um, it's not really a tutorial. It's um, because a tutorial maybe is not useful to you because you need the software. But these are these are blog posts, which are like um, these are blog. There's four of them, and I'm trying to get them all to show on the screen, but I'm really failing here because, um, but. They are uh, very useful in explaining what it can do for you. Um, I think at this point the tutorial is not so useful because you would need the software and you would need the data. Yes, here they are. So now we have them all on the one page. So you have what is principal component analysis? How does it work? Um, what is the t-test? How do I use what is grouping? Normalization and mark review, and how do I interpret the output of the PCA? So probably for you guys, the first one and the last one are going to be the most interesting right now because you don't actually have the software. Um, but the other ones are also maybe interesting to read. And um, this lady writes very nicely uh, so you can, a um, little bit like a textbook. 
Um, you are welcome to look through the link that the, uh, that uh, Rola sent here um, about uh, Markov V1.3 features, but this is only the new features that came in the last version, so it doesn't explain like from the beginning. So I think from the beginning, it's going to be nice what's on the page here, uh, what's on the on the website here. Uh, so I'll leave this page open for you. Um, here's the tutorial. Um, so this starts from the beginning and uh, goes through also useful, at least the beginning part of it. Um, we don't need this. And then um, how can I see the chat here? Because I opened it on my computer. So here's the stuff. Here's what, yeah, what role is it? There you go. So you have those three pages. You have the, this is the new features. You have these nice blog posts, and you have this PCA tutorial. Um, it is a complex software. However, I think um, it may help you to find this low-level unknowns. And also, if you have different samples, I don't know if you plan on some point, uh, because I noticed that you, that you call this sample 120 minutes. So, Maybe over. Maybe in the future you have different time points. Is that correct? Yes, I have already the same time. Yeah. Right. So this software can help you plot that, plot those time points, uh, and to see the differences in between the time points as well. Without, whereas in OS you'll have to do it in a binary fashion, always comparing A with B, and then B with C, and then B with D, or something like that. Whereas Marker View, you can load all the samples and it does the PCA on all the samples. So have a look at that and see if it's useful for you. Um, and let's do this. We take a short break now for 20 minutes. And then we'll come back and we'll look at the new samples. So the blank is running now. And that will finish in seven minutes and then 20 minutes plus the calibration. So it's going to be about, um, it's going to be about 30 minutes from now. Yeah, so let's come back at 11.52. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, so let's take a break till 11.52. And then when we come back, we'll process this 10x sample uh, the same way and hopefully the higher concentration, we can see a little bit more. Okay. All right, guys, so see you in 30 minutes, okay? okay. All right. We'll finish so we can start the processing, right? Yes, okay, great. All right, so let's try targeted first. See, and then we'll go back and we'll continue with our unknown analysis. All right, so it should be all the way at the bottom. Yes. Right, so that's what we did just now, and we can browse in the degradation products method. Okay, great. And save process. Okay, so um, table settings, targeted. All right, so we have the SMX. That's good. Yeah, that looks nice. E5 counts, so that's still very much on scale. That's good. Okay, now we need to check, of course, the retention time for the other stuff. Yes, now we start to see something. There you go. That's better. And that makes sense. The 99 is going to be a lot more polar, so it's a lot earlier. So that's good. That one we don't see. This 
one will have something, I think, because, yeah, maybe right here. There we go. So we were just below the sensitivity level. This one is here. Maybe that's a problem because it's also too low. So, you know, you can go still 10 times higher, right? And this is the way you have to work until you understand the sensitivity of the instrument for your compounds. And once you know, so you know after today, you can work at this 100 times higher level, right? That 10 that we did now and then 10 more. Um, and, and that's okay. This is the main component is E5. We can go up to E6. And it'll be all right up to E6. Um, so maybe more than E6, you want to start to consider, okay, it's maybe a little bit too concentrated in terms of stickiness, um, which could contaminate the system. And this one is maybe here, but maybe that's a little bit late. Yeah. I don't believe that. What is the, what is the change in the formula? Um, so... Oh, that's just a saturation event, huh? Oh, am I looking at something wrong here? Oh, wow, no, it's a big change. It's uh, because the O and the N are flipped. Okay, so it, it's uh, three times ox oxygenation, huh? Three oxygens are added. Yes. Yeah. So that should make it more polar, right? The addition of oxygen is polar. So we would expect that to be an earlier retention time, not a later retention time. So I don't particularly believe that. Um, and then this one, also not present. And this one, let's see how we do. Um, so here, so that's interesting. It didn't change, right? So what does that mean? That means this is not it, because you increased your sample 10 times, but this peak remained the same. That means that it's probably coming from the background solvent somewhere, and that was also the other person's comment, I guess it was Rachel, that it was in the, in the standard as well. Okay, so, yeah. In some cases, we got a better result because we saw um, the other components. But in the case of this one, we didn't see. Um, so let's try, okay, the, the comparison sample is running now. Um, so once it's finished, we can add it and we can see if these compounds are present also in the comparison sample, but my guess is not, because you increased 10 times, so these guys came up. So we can now try to run the unknown and try to find these two. Should This one we should find quite easily. Does that make sense? Yes. So we're getting there. Um, You can run also 10 times higher, I think, and you'll still be okay. Maybe I'll try this tomorrow. Uh, sorry, maybe I'll try it today? Yes. Okay. That. Um, so let's see. Well, what we can do while we're waiting for that is we can practice at least to get some decent unknown results. So let me see now here. I'm going to write this down. So this is 99.0554, and this is at retention time 2.166. Okay, great. So we will use, we'll do a, a, an unknown analysis and we'll use the new sample here. And we'll use the blank from what we were, or the standard from what ran already. I know it's 10 times less, but we'll, that will help us to uh, find 
this as a true unknown, and then we'll know that our software is doing a good job. So um, that would be this one then. IDA, yes, okay. And we'll browse in our new defaults method. Okay. Okay, and then uh, here we'll select 60 process. Okay. Let's try this and see how we do. So let's do the, uh, first of all, the table settings for unknowns, non-target screen, and then we can search or sort by area ratio, and we can look at the sample. All right, so let's see how the, first of all, how the integration is going. Okay, well, there's an example of something that's in the sample and not in the standard. So I think now we have some good settings. Sorry, that was a little bit my fault because I kind of forgot about that. But now we have some good settings of things that you can, potential things you can go through and look for. And here's the potential formula. Now, whether that makes sense to you or not with nine nitrogens, right? Probably not related to your compound. Okay, so that's obviously nothing from a bad integration. Also the same. So the first one is promising as a difference, but these all are not real. So we could sort by signal to noise. Let's do that. Big signal to noise. There we go. So there's an example where it's in both, but it's five times higher in the new sample. So that's probably not something interesting because there's a 10 times difference anyway. Basically the same thing there. And there's your 99. So now we have good settings, I think. Ninety nine O five five four. It's exactly correct. O five five four. Now, did it find the right formula? C four H six N two O. Yes, that's correct, right? See where I'm reading it from? You have the you have it here. And you also have the formula find a result here in the column. This column. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's great. All right. So that is, I think, much, we're doing much better than we were before with the better integration settings. And we, we really found that. Now, how many times? So that's saying 100 times. So area ratio of comparison, it's 100 times in the sample than in the standard and the signal to noise is 370 so you see that I, I changed and sometimes I search sometimes I sort by signal to noise sometimes I sort by area ratio of comparison um, we're still not perfect 
because you're going to have to sort quite a lot of area ratios of comparison to get that, and you're going to have a lot of this problem, right? So what we could try to do now, we have good integration settings, is we could try now to move that slider bar back. Can we try that? Uh, do you know what slider bar I'm talking about? The slider bar that uh, whether we are fast or whether we are comprehensive in finding unknown samples, unknown peaks. I will show you as soon as I get this to work. Okay, so let's select the same sample and the same control. And now we'll browse in that same method. And we'll say edit. Okay, so now we'll go to non-target peaks and this is the slider bar I'm speaking about. So maybe what we can do is we can move the slider bar here and we'll see how it does at still finding the 99 uh, versus finding those kind of rubbish peaks where the integration is not great. So let's do that. And we'll say save as, and we'll say here, new defaults, and I'll put slider left side, okay? Save. Okay, and then we'll select the control again. And we'll choose that one. Okay, let's process that. Okay, here we are. So we have a much reduced table. Maybe this is not good. Target. And we can see the peaks here. And area ratio of control. Yeah, this is too, too low, huh? No, 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 this is not good. No, we could try, we could try this minimum peak height setting. But the problem is these have E4 height. This kind of integration is really a problem. How to avoid that? How to avoid that? We could do it by signal. We could say anything so anything with signal to noise 50 or less because the 99 where is the 99 where did he go ah we maybe have to do by signal to noise right so it was here it was here and then this is still okay a peak and then it starts all of this stuff at 16. So let's change the default settings to be signal to noise 50. And we'll try again. Now just keep in mind when you do this, you are also setting your default settings every time you make a method. So if you make a new quantitation method and you keep it at 50, it will be 50 here. And then, um, then uh, you may not integrate the smaller peaks in your quantitation. So this is better for the unknown screening, but maybe not better for the quantitation. So this is something that you will need to consider, and maybe you'll need to come to these default settings a little bit more than you would like to. Um, so we'll put here... Okay, so let's make now a new method. 
and we're going to use the same data. All right, so um, this sample and this control. Okay, now we have to make a new method because we changed the defaults. So this is going to be with the defaults now, new defaults, and we'll do non-targeted screening. Okay, we'll turn on the library search, but not sure that we'll find anything with library search, but you never know. Oh. So, uh, flagging rules, we have the qualitative rules set up. These two, and we did 50. Okay, formula finder was used. And basically here I change to 100. That's fine. And then the non-targeted piece. Okay, 1.5 minutes to 10. And we'll keep this here now. And we'll put here three. Okay, so what are our changes? So New defaults, slider, right, signal noise is minimum 50 minimum. Okay. Correct. Save that. All right. So now there we go. And then here is the control. Okay, let's try that. Okay, so we on the sample, bring in our column settings, and then let's try now area ratio of control. Yeah, there it is now as the third target. So I think we did something really good here. So there's something at 233, 304. Ah, that could be interesting. That is a retention time somewhat similar to your stuff. I don't necessarily believe that it has nine nitrogens, though. Huh? Yes. How many? How many nitrogens does your thing have? It has five. Three it has three nitrogens. So you added six nitrogens without adding any oxygens. Hmm. But that could definitely be something interesting to follow up on. We should look and see if it went up. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, so you 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 you, uh, you increase your concentration by ten times, correct? Yeah. So now you can go and look in the lower concentrated one, and it should be ten times less. Yes. If, if it's the same in the lower concentrated one, it's not related to your stuff because your stuff has to follow the 10x dilution or 10x increase in concentration that you did. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so we can go and follow that. But now look, the 99, we got that down to being the third, the third choice. So I think changing that signal to noise threshold was really good in getting rid of those um, really rubbish, just horrible integrations. Um, uh, there's an example also of something that increased 10 times roughly. And that's right around the right retention time. So that could be also something interesting for you. Also here, 
0.338, that's maybe an addition of sulfur. Didn't you say you use persulfate or something? Yes, I use persulfate, maybe. So that's, how are we going to justify that? That's an addition of sulfur. Wouldn't imagine that just sulfur would add without oxygen, but... Yeah, it's without oxygen. Yeah. How many carbons? Let me, I gotta write some. The problem is, with this work, you really gotta, yeah, it's C10. So you didn't change the carbon structure, but you added two more sulfurs. Yes. And you added four, so you added two, you added two SH2 groups, N3O3. Ah, but you lost an oxygen, huh? You yeah. lost an oxygen. That could definitely be something interesting there. Mm -hmm. um, we have the MSMS data, actually. So you could start playing structural elucidation directly with that. Um, and take a look, um, 338, 310, 292, so where's the MSMS of this? So you have a 156, let's see what's in common, not a lot in common. It's interesting though. And sulfur is not so polar, so you don't see such a retention time change. That can also make sense. Uh, 254. Ah, this is this is it <laughs> with the library match. Yeah, okay. Um, this is a 278. Uh-huh, that's an increase. No form uh, formula. Mm. C15. It's a five, addition of five carbons. Mm, I don't know. N3, it's addition of a lot of carbons with two oxygens gone, huh? Yes. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm not an organic chemist, so I don't really know. Ah, but this could be the isotope of this one, look, 278 and 276. Yeah, this is more likely. And the other one, do they have the, yeah, look, they have exactly the same retention times? Yeah. 278 is the isotope, so it's probably 276, and this looks a little bit more reasonable. Well, that's quite a big change, though. 276, now we have it here. So what happened here? You have, ah, uh, you gained a bunch of nitrogens again. I don't know if that really makes sense, right? Lost two carbons. You lost a bunch of hydrogens. You gained six nitrogens? No. I think the formula is not right, but that could possibly be linked to your compound. Um, 76. Huh? Let's see the sulfur methos. Uh, can fix, so this problem where you cannot see the structure and you cannot see the data anymore. You can fix this problem by going to options and saying um, start the y-axis at percentage. Now you see percentage. So uh, maybe that's just the, the addition of a sodium. As a, So what is 276 minus 254? 20, yeah, that's a sodium addict. Okay. So you have some sodium in your sample, so it makes sense that you have then uh, that you have sodium, a sodium yes. ion. So yes. this is 
This is not an MH plus. This is an M plus sodium plus. Yes. Of the same compound. So that's not so interesting for you. And the 92 is maybe a potassium. 292 minus 254 is 38. Yes, this is the potassium addict. Ah, it even tells us that. Look, this is M plus potassium. This one, it, it was not able to catch that it was a sodium. So it just gave you an MH plus, but this one, it tells you M plus potassium. So those last two are interesting, but they, they're not any change. It's just in the ionization. Yes. So 278 is the isotope of that. So what is interesting is perhaps the 338. But the interesting thing is it's also at the same retention time. 254 minus 338 is 84. Well, you'll have to play with that and see if that if those extra sulfurs really make sense. I'm a little skeptical that it's coming at the same retention time. Um, and then 156, also the same retention time, so that could be a fragment, actually. Where is the 254? Ah, yeah, you see that? That's an in-source fragmentation. So all of these have the same retention time. So I think they're all artifacts of the sulfamethoxazole. They are not actually changes. You have to look for different, you have to look for changes in retention time. Yes. Uh, uh, one retention time, one compound. That's the golden rule. So this one is definitely a change. We know 99. This one is interesting, 304. Because it has a very different retention time. And it is only, oh, but that's a lot of nitrogens being added. So uh, you'll have to play with that one and see. That'll be also a lot better at 10x more because you see the MSMS is not very good here because of the, because of the concentration. All right, well, um, and 233 is maybe the most interesting, huh? because it's definitely a change in retention time, and it is only one, so it's a loss of uh, one, one carbon, but six nitrogens are added. I don't know. It's not the isotope of something else, is it? We don't see like a 232 or something? No. Let's see here. Where is it? 232. Is it 233.0781? It does make sense. It's less mass, huh? less mass, lost one carbon, three hydrogens, and it gained three nitrogens, lost an oxygen and a sulfur. That's a pretty big change. I have to see. Was is two thirty three in their list? Oops, that's a training presentation. Where's their little chart? There we go. No, they don't see. But they do have some nitrogen substitution, right? So what happens here? How many? So we have one. One is adding, right? So now you've got one, two, three, four. So you could potentially do both of those, I guess. 
but then you would have five, but then how would you get a sixth? That would be tricky. Because 299 minus 233, oh, 66, that's big. No, wait, what? Should be 34. 233 minus 299. Ah, it is 66. Yeah, right, 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 right. Hmm. I don't know if you can really have six nitrogens on this thing. That's too many nitrogens for this mass. Yes. Uh, you'll have to see if that makes sense or not. Well, I'll try the 10x more and see. But I think you get the hang of it now. And then you'll have to follow through with the structural elucidation of this data. Don't forget you have this button, right? So you can go directly to explore mode if you want to do that. Uh, the chem spider button is here, but we didn't set it up yet. so. Like they said, I think they want to wait for the license, which is fine, because you'll have to do it in explore mode. All right, well, I think we got you some better settings. Um, let's see, what are this other stuff down below? So, this is maybe one of the triazines. Fortunately, we still didn't get a good integration here. No, it doesn't make sense. It's not a B sample. Still not doing a great job of integration, right? Uh, it could be that the signal to noise of that peak is below 50. Uh, so what is this one? This is a 197, 197 at 5.62, uh, 197 at 5.62. So what is the signal to noise of this? Uh, it's no, it's substantial. That's 300, but maybe here that is below 50. Mm. doesn't want to do it, does it? I think we ran into the same problem that it won't. Height is fine. I think we have to run it from the beginning. I don't think it will change the integration at this point because it hasn't found it. So it will not do the peak finding again. Um, but now I got a little worried. Maybe we set that 50 a little bit too high. 
maybe we should set it closer to 30 and then it will do a little bit better job of integrating these smaller peaks. So we made big improvements, but yeah, like what's the signal to noise there? So we can go here. Signal to noise there is 60. Yeah, so if that's 60, then the other one has to be more than 50 for sure. So it's not signal to noise that's hurting us. Like that, for example. Maybe it's ratio of control again. We left it at three, right? So that might be borderline that it is not three times bigger. No, that was not the example. That one is much smaller. Or was that the example? See that here it's 12,000, here it's less. So anyway, it's not in the sample because it's less than the control. Okay, so I think we did get pretty decent settings then. I mean, we identified the 99 now as the third hit that's a pretty small peak. All right. Okay, so um, what would you guys like to do at this point? Um, I don't really have any, any more like plan to show. Um, would you like to spend some time maybe this afternoon playing yourselves? Uh, and working in the software and just going through the different uh, settings yourselves uh, with me like watching or me checking in with you. Um, would that be useful for you? Um, or if you have specific questions, uh, you're, you're welcome to ask. Hello. No questions now. Okay. So, um, okay. What do you guys think about this plan? Um, that um, I leave you to yourselves for a couple hours. Now it's twelve thirty, so we could we could meet again at two o'clock, and then um, I can stay with you another hour from two until three. And then, uh, unfortunately, at three, I have another meeting. Um, but in the time from now until two o'clock, for example, you could run a 10x more concentration if you have it, yeah. and you could you could do everything yourself and do the processing yourself, um, and just see how far you get, see what you find, and then um, you know build up a list of questions or comments or whatever. And then when I come back at two o'clock, you can show me the results, what you, what you have, and we can answer any questions you have uh, for the last hour. Okay. Is that a good plan? Yeah. Sounds like a good plan. Yeah. Sounds like a good plan? Okay, yeah. great. Um, and, then, um, and then, of course, after that, you guys will be on your own for two weeks. Um, but then we can do the same thing basically in January on a longer scale. Um, so, so yeah, play around and see, and just uh, you know, if you have any uh, questions, write them down. Um, also, make sh I didn't do my own advice, but make sure that you save as you go. Here we did five tables without saving, uh, so make sure that you save as you go, and just keep any notes if you have something for me to see or whatever. Um, and I'll join you again at uh, two p.m. So it, it is the same time, right? 12.35? Yes. Okay, same time. Okay, yeah. great. 
So I'll see you at 2 p.m. That gives you like two and a half hours to, to eat some lunch and also to, to play around yourselves. Is that good? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so have some fun and good luck, and I will see you at 2 o'clock. Okay. Okay, great. See you guys. Bye for now.